Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday meditation gathering. I'm so glad you're all here to share this time together. Meditation gathers energy and strength when we meditate together. This week, we have Carolina Carada, who will lead us in meditation, and then we'll have 20 minutes of silence. After that, we'll open it up for sharing, and we end at 10.45. Over to you, Carolina. Thank you, everyone. So lovely. Let me see if I can get this. Okay, here we are. Thank you so much. So happy to be here again. The calling is to join in these silent meditations every week. And I was here a little while ago. So very happy to be given the opportunity to bring a topic that is very moving for me. And I trust it will be very moving for all of us and will bring us a lot of clarity in our steps to be taken as, you know, as the year proceeds. So um, the topic that came to me very clearly was, is contained in chapter 26, uh, Roman numeral two. And it says many forms, one correction. So, uh, Mm, I will read a little part of it, just as initiation for our silent meditation, and then we can share. Um, I have been working the past year, uh, 100% dedicated with my course groups in healing, healing the mind using the psychotherapy pamphlet and the content of the course. And uh, of course, we have come to terms that there is one correction and that's that and uh, in these times that we are living where there seems to be a need for physical healing or for the healing of our finances the healing of our relationships there seems to be different forms of needed healing but today um, I was guided to bring you just one solution so I'm sure you're all very familiar with this, but I will read it for you. Okay, so just take a deep breath and let me read for you, okay? It is not difficult to understand the reasons why you do not ask the Holy Spirit to solve all problems for you. He has not greater difficulty in resolving some than others. Every problem is the same to him because each one is solved in just the same respect and through the same approach. The aspects that need solving do not change, whatever form the problem seems to take. A problem can appear in many forms, and it will do so while the problem lasts. It serves no purpose to attempt to solve it in a special form. It will recur and then recur again and yet again until it has been answered for all time and will not rise again in any form. And only then are you released from it. So just to ignite our silent meditation, please join me in a short prayer for the opening of the mind, the opening of the heart, and even the opening of the human experience to true problem solving. So I come to you, Holy Spirit, as part of my brotherhood, with the intention and the purpose to open myself to recognizing where and when the problems are solved. I am humbled by the prospect that there is only one problem and only one solution. And I trust that my mind and my heart is now opening to you, Holy One, for all my problems to be solved. 
today. I will not cherish or hold to myself any problem or any idea or any concern that I might think that I can solve by myself. Today, I am humbly accepting that you are the light that solves all problems. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your guidance, Holy Spirit. Amen.
open your eyes slowly and come back into the room. We have approximately 20 minutes left for sharing your reflections and your questions. If you'd like to share, raise your hand or you can use the reactions button at the bottom of the screen and I'll invite you to take yourself off of mute. And if you'd like to ask Carolina a question or you have a comment with confidentiality, put your message in the chat function at the bottom of the screen and I'll read it out. would like to share there's a message on the let me read it I'll, re I'll read it so it says um i will have to drop from the call soon but need to ask carolina this question i am dedicated to following the workbook studying the course and want to check if what i am experiencing is okay or not having a sense of release from ego thinking and seeing that everything of the ego world is meaningless, but not feeling anything, brackets, the love, joy, peace, close brackets, most of the time, but, uh, but sometimes such as when I read the text, um, is this normal for course students or am I going down a wrong irrespective route? I hope I am not simply adding to the insanity and that's it. <laughs> Hey, thank you, Sarah, for your question. I have it right here. I'm looking at it now on the chat. And um, thank you for following the course and for doing and studying the lessons. Um, uh, the lessons are the ones that will make the change in your mind. Now, as um, the course tells us, and this precisely in the psychotherapy pamphlet, it says that we must not give a specific form to the healing of our mind. So in my experience with the course, and it's been 30 years now since I started studying, I've seen wonderful, beautiful healing and, and mystical experiences that are different in many of us. And, in, and then at the same, time they are the same what um, I do believe and in, in my practice as a student as a teacher is that I'm here to forgive myself allowing the Holy Spirit to bring the light into my mind allowing the Holy Spirit to um, work through me without me being in the way and the way that healing or that forgiveness takes form I should not expect a specific form. So as you say, the course also um, speaks about judgment and says that the only true uh, use of judgment is to use it to know how you are doing by the way you feel, to use judgment to check out your feelings. This is also from the psychotherapy pamphlet. You use it to check to see how do I feel and then judgment is used. How do I feel about this? We all have had in our time an idea of how uh, the mystical experience should be. And um, what I've come to terms with is that we do have a highly individualized plan and each one of us will be guided, will be healed, forgiveness will happen through us and thanks to the Holy Spirit, but it will never replicate itself exactly in each one of us, even though the end result will be the same. Now you asked me if this neutrality and then this joy coming up is right or wrong and I'm tempted to share my own experience in that sense but I am guided to keep it to myself as in dear sister dear holy spirit I want to acknowledge my healing without judging the form this is what I can say to you 
today. This is the way I experience it. And, and this is the way that I'm feeling it now because I've been with the course for so long and there has been different stages. And I know the end, and this I can say for everyone, is to um, allow the Holy Spirit to do the healing through me and for myself and release myself from trying to identify the form that that healing is taking. I hope that helps. Well, I'm not sure I'll have to listen to after. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't seem to even be enjoying anything that I used to, hardly. Well, I have, you know, um, Sarah, and if I'm allowed, you know, uh, to just extend a little bit on that. I remember back when I was living in Venezuela, I know if you guys know that I'm a Venezuelan teacher. I was born in Venezuela, originally living there, and I've been in Europe for the past maybe 15 years. So I remember my first student, the first ever student that I had. And we started... Uh, we were working together for a long while. And then one day she said, does this mean that I have to be thinking about God all the time? And I said, yes. And she said, no, hey, I want a life. You know? But then she carried on doing the lessons and, and, and studying together and whatnot. And then one day she said to me, you know, I went to my favorite restaurant which I used to derive so much pleasure from it, from attending it, from going there and eating there. And I was surprised how neutral I felt and I wasn't into the pleasure of the restaurant per se. So I thought, oh my goodness, what is happening to me? And then um, it was interesting because there was a class that came from that comment because the pleasures that um, pardon? Oh, uh, sorry about that. Uh, the pleasures are related to the senses. Yes. To the smell, to the hearing, to the taste, to the touch. That is not of the self. That is of the ego body, the, the, the home of the ego, which we could say is this construct. So as you begin to surrender yourself to the Holy Spirit, spirit there is a generality that extends that is addressed in the lessons where it sell, where it says that um right now i can't I, what comes to mind is chapter 15 at the end of it at the end of chapter 15 it says allow this year to be different by allowing to see everything the same so if everything is the same, it means you're pulling away from the pleasures of the senses. And I find this the root to calmness and silence. This is how I experience it. I know that helps, Sarah. Absolutely. That's answered. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who'd like to share? John. John, take yourself off mute. Yeah, hi. Thank you, Carolina, so much. Really enjoyed that. And what I love, two things I love to be reminded of is that there is only ever one problem. That, that for me, was the biggest lesson as I worked through the course over years. I used to say, that was the problem, this was a problem, that was another problem. And once I really, really accepted that the only problem was my sense of guilt, deep, deep, unconscious guilt. And the beauty of that I found was since there was only one problem, there's only one solution. And that's when I realized that I had to work totally on, on my own innocence and forgiveness of everything that I came in contact with them, including myself. So that was really great to hear that. And also the other thing was the reference you made, and I think you said it was in the manual for teachers, but have recently just come under, come across it in the text as well about the importance of the one judgment that I need to make is how do I feel? 
And what I've done, I've developed a, a habit now of asking myself, how does this feel? How does this feel? How does this feel? How does this feel when I, when I write this in an email? How does it feel if I write it differently? How does it feel if I speak those words? How does it feel if I speak another word? How does it feel? And it just has helped me so much. So the answer for me is when I feel peaceful, when I feel calm, I can still enjoy all the things of the senses. It's, the course is not telling me that I can't enjoy anything at all. It actually shows me that if I practice these lessons, I will feel even more joy in everything I do because there'll be no difference. And I found this last year where I made a commitment because I was, I was comfortable with how much I'd grown and healed, but I still had this one area of my life which sounds funny to people, but it was football. And I realized that it was the football, my attachment making a special relationship out of football that caused me disturbance because I'd get angry when they didn't play the way I wanted. I'd get excited when they played the way I wanted. So I said, I'm going to use this. This, the Holy Spirit has given me this because the Holy Spirit knows that this can connect with me. So I started to practice these same principles and my whole experience has been transformed. I can still watch the football, Annie and I watch it together, we both enjoy it. But now it's like that. Ah, of course, I still, I'm not, I'm not I'm a perfect work of art, but one minute I'm, I will go there. But generally speaking, my whole mood has changed by applying the course of movements to that special relationship. And thank it's about you. how I feel. And I feel better. Thank so you. Thank you for the That's just lovely. I'd like to add to that, John, that I have the same experience as you. I have, I live a full joyful life, but I, I, I discovered that when I was into the pleasure of things, I was into the scarcity of things. There was a back and forth, you know? I have my pleasure, now I don't have my pleasure. And then in between there's a need that entails um, anxiety. And then as that shifted, um, as that shifted through time, then I find myself in a joyous experience that of course it's a given by the Holy Spirit, showing me that the joy does not come from what I do. It comes from within. So if I accept that joy, everything can be used purposefully for me to remember myself and God. So. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Great. Um, well, here's a comment. It says, uh, thanks for your great examples, John. And there was one before by Sarah that I saw that it popped up, but I didn't read it. Is that right? Or, or was it just for me? Oh, right. It was just, that assures me that I am on the right route. Bingo. Okay. That was Sarah. Who'd like to share? Raise your hand. I just wanted to come in and say, um, I love that reading you you read this morning and uh it was it really touched me i i'm sure i read it before. i know i read it before but i can't remember it and uh one thing that stood out for me was um when it said something about problems will keep on recurring and recurring mm -hmm. until you solve the real problem there's only one problem and uh um i had i had something go on for a few months where i had um uh, I had an issue with somebody and uh, he, he did something which upset me and he wouldn't apologize. And I was really angry about it. And I put, I told, I explained to him why he was wrong and I was right. And it just, the problem just kept on going. It just wouldn't stop. And then a month later, um, something else happened with it, with a neighbor who's um, just attacked me for no reason. And I said, it's all in your mind. You, you know, I know she had mental health issues. It's in your mind. And she came back twice as strong. And I thought she was going to kill me. She threatened to kill me. Oh, goodness. Police and 
um, but I still walked around frightened she, she I might see her and then and then a month later I had something else happen where um, I was attacked in on lots of different levels and and it just kept kept on coming and uh, I thought what is going on and I so I just gave it to Holy Spirit and I said Holy Spirit how would you have me see this and uh, what I got was in your defenselessness your safety lies and I never understood that line before but so I just from then on, I just gave up defending myself and I haven't had a problem since.